Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. Take it from the Iron Woman. We only have special guests. Today we go to Marisa in Ecuador. In her biography, it says, after 26 years of successful professional performance with no plan B, she left her job to find a new pathway with her husband and kids. Now she leads Mas Connectiva, a bureau of social innovation focused on enhancing supply chains and become more inclusive and sustainable. And not enough. Recently, she has written a book, published a book, The Courage to Give Up. Welcome, Marisa. What can we learn from you? Tell us a little bit about your journey. Thank you so much, Susanna. All people which is hearing us, more than we can show or teach for people, I want to share my story. As you said, 26 years in the corporate world, climbing little by little to the success mountain. When I get there, I used to think, okay, and what's next? This is it. Really? This is it? Just being here, being how people is climbing with a lot of effort to doing nothing else, learning nothing else. That idea was uh, in my mind every day. 2021, I give up on my corporate job when I was absolutely successful. That's why some people uh, were asking me, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. Where are you going to? My home. Are you crazy? Maybe yes. <laughs> That's the kind of questions I receive at a time. It was real. I have no plan B. I have no plan B. I just know that I have something inside me, in my heart, in my mind, that was trying to be discovered. I didn't know at the time what was it, what is at, at the present time, what is uh, the real, the real realization uh, of that, but was so hard for me. What's so hard because I said, I was thinking, for example, okay, I have the perfect marriage, getting married with my husband for 20 years, and the perfect marriage, the perfect family. My tickets are, are good people, are solidarity People are great students. Okay, I have the life that I dreamed when I was young. And why do I feel empty? Why do I feel empty? Because I have all that the people told us that it was success and perfection. And it was so hard. I, I, was, I was thinking, okay, maybe I'm getting crazy. <laughs> crazy. Yes, absolutely. Good. Because they say a good idea comes from sometimes crazy people. Crazy is actually a compliment. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, I start to seeking help for me. I received the help of a coach like you, Susan, mm -hmm. a bright person who has me something like, okay, can you simplify your life? At that time, I was thinking, how simplify? I love what I live. I love how I live. I love what I have. Once again, the verb have was in my conversations, in my inner conversations. He asked me what you need to live and what you want to live, what you really want. I said, well, I want work less hours. I really want to be more time with my kids and my husband. I really want to have enough time to do exercises. Okay, what do you need? Okay, I need to pay the college of my kids. Yeah. I need to pay the house. I need to pay. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. And at that time, we were living the COVID, uh, the most challenging situation around the world. I was thinking, oh, my life, I want to work less hours. <laughs> <laughs> so in that kind of crisis, kind of personal crisis, what I was going through, someday my lovely husband, seeing me struggling with myself, told me, 
okay, my queen. <laughs> he told me, my queen, my queen, if it's not for you, give up. Leave that behind and give up. But he didn't think at that time that my answer will be, yes, you're right. I'm going to give up. <laughs> In that point, I started to think, okay, there's this I'm not feel living happy. What I have to do next to be really happy that I want to live. And start, I planned today, today, it was April on the time, uh, 2021. Mm-hmm. Okay, today is April. How many time I need to be with a, for example, with a support or financial support to give up with, with no pressure of my mind, knowing that I'm not going to that. My family is going to be good. In June, I said, okay, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate all the learnings that I have in this process, but I have to go. I need to close this cycle in my life. Mm -hmm. I leave. Thank you so much. And the answers were so funny because they said, okay, you are tired. Take vacations. I said, yes, I'm tired, but it's not the solution, the real solution for me. Three days later, with my job and my assignations in perfect order, I said, okay, this is my last day that I said 30 days before. Thank you so much. In Ecuador, we have a labor law that when you are laid off of a job, you receive an important comp- compensation for that situation. But in this country too, we used to use this legal figure to negotiate with your uh, company, trying to take some of this amount for you. Some partners told me, you have to negotiate your yeah. live. You have a lot of uh, years working here. You are crazy. You cannot go outside with nothing. I said, no, because they are not laid me off. It's my decision. As it's my decision, it's my responsibility to go with only what I need to receive, but no more. That's, Suzanne, is the first tricky question you have to handle on when you take great decisions in your life. Are you available to take all the responsibility with this decision or not? That's a good question. Yes. Yes. Are you absolutely sure that you are going to take all the responsibility? All the responsibility, for example, at that moment was, I will not negotiate nothing else that I have to receive. This is a big yes, risk. Absolutely. Because I have a family. I have two little children. <laughs> but I said, yes, yes, we have to be responsible, but more than responsible. We have to be brave because be brave is a sign of confidence on yourself. I said, yes, I don't need anything else. I give up and thank you so much. The next days of that decision, my husband said, okay, we need days outside the city. You have been working like, I don't like know. A how can I... Yeah, like a hamster. <laughs> hamster in a wheel. A hamster in a wheel the last 26 years. We need to close the chapter of the book of the, in your life. We need to go some days out of the city. We went to the beach and when I was at the beach, I said, I was thinking what I have to do now. At that time, I knew that I have, I had four months to financial support to stay absolutely in peace with my decision, but it was just four months. I said, okay, what we are going to do next? I remember that I was finishing my second master degree in social innovation and economy. And I said, okay, I have to do the final work to get to get that certification. I started to do that theoretical job. I discovered what we are doing today. I discovered the way of Mass Connectiva. That's why Mass Connectiva is focused on enhancing supply chains. Because always I love to work trying to be more inclusive, business more inclusive, more sustainable business. It was really, really important as today. Today, I work only in what is important to me. And then we can go back to the question that what you need or what you want. Today, what we need comes from what we want to do. And it's easily 
to live like this absolutely easily. Our life journeys change a lot, but for a good reason. Today, we, for example, have conscious, conscious way that we take our food, for example. It's good for our children, and it's good for us as a marriage. Dear Susanne, the, the journey was no easy. It's never was easy, no, the journey. <laughs> was no full of clear answers. Today, when we see back, we said it was the good decision we can take. Did you start to write the book at that time or the book came later? The book came later. It's a great question. The book came later, it came later because I had depression chapter in my life. I didn't know at that time, six months ago to the launch uh, of the book, I didn't know that at that time that burnout, for example, has, I don't know how can I say, sequelas in your, in your mental and your mental health. You have consequences, for example. Uh, a burnout can have many consequences. It can be depression, Sweet. headaches, yes. anxiety. Exactly. I didn't know. That. And six months before the launch of the book, I had a depression chapter. I understand that I need to share all of the story that I'm sharing with you and with the people that are listening to us because it is more important to show to the world that we need to reframe the success. We need to reframe the perfection. We need to ask deep inside what is the role of the, of the job in our lives? What is the real job? We need to understand that our generation, I'm talking about them, people who was born between 80s or 70s and today, we are the grandchildren children of people who live some economic depression. Then we have our parents grow out thinking that half is all that we need to do to be happy in our lives. Think about what you need, but first think what you want. What, what makes you happy, really happy? Not just by the moment when you have a new car or when you have a new <laughs> house or when you have a new cell phone or new, I don't know. Not, not only that, that moment, really happy. What gives you peace or what makes you involved in a well-being stage? When I listen to you, when you say when you're happy, when you get your car or your cell phone, sometimes we get things. And then we're not really happier to get to that happiness stage, at least for me, is when you work towards something. It might be, I save money and then I can buy a car or get a house. What makes me happy? And a lot of people, they set goals and yeah, I need a house. Okay, then you have the house. Then what? That's the question. How can you keep that happiness, happiness state in a way, for longer than just five minutes. Exactly. Did you say there is no one-way ticket to happiness? Yes. Yes, there's no one-way ticket because happiness, as being in a state, as you said, should be a constant in your life. But as the life itself, not all the day has the same faces. We need to discover what are the miracles that we have daily. We have Miracles every day, Suzanne. Starting from go back home safe, have health, going through to live in a safety house. In a house, have a roof yes. over your head. But yeah. we take for granted a lot of things, a lot of situations that we have in our lives. How do you create the happiness? Give us some examples for the listeners. Well, for example, yesterday, yesterday I have a, a challenging day in, in the work life. At the end of the day, I know I solved all the situation. I found three ways to solve it. Yesterday at night, I said, okay, it was a good day. We have solutions. We have solutions. Maybe we, we need to stop that the hamster will and start to be or see the things on perspective, trying to put you outside of the situation and see, okay, is that so dark as it seems? Is that so hard as it seems? Is that so critical as it seems? Maybe not. That's a tool 
what is uh, helping for me to build my daily happiness. And I always have a final question. What do you do when you don't work? It seems like you were working for 26 years on and on and on, like in the hamster wheel, and then you slow down. But what do you, and you're still working a lot. It seems like when you write a book and you need to promote the book, but what do you do when you don't work? Ooh, I love to dance when I do dishes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the dishes for me is a great opportunity to slow down my mind and think what I'm grateful for. You don't I drop love- the dishes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just, just, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. I love read books. I love learn a lot, a lot of For example, I learned a lot about numerology, learned about spirituality, I learned about economics, the new economics, new ways to have business. It seems like you're working a lot. (laughs) And while I'm asking you this question, you're thinking, what else can I do? What else can I do? Isn't it also about slowing down? They say slow down in order to be more productive, dancing and doing the dishes. I see you. Yes, that's because we need empty spaces in our mind or our journeys to have new things. That's a rule. Yeah. If you don't, do, don't have space to have a new thing, just thinking about something material. If you don't have a space to put something new in your house, don't get you it. Can, <laughs> yes, don't get it. Yeah. You can get it. Even though you want it. You but is it necessary? Have... That's the question. Yes. Yes. That's the question. We need wow. to have spaces in our mind, in our hearts, in our living days to find new things we want, we really want. Thank you so much for all your wisdom and all your insights and your next big steps. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You, Suzanne. Thank you. What a cool conversation. What are you taking away? What do you need? What do you want? Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday. Check in, chime in, listen to cool stories and also get the book. Take it from the Iron Woman, Global Business Coaching with Sports Parallels. Get it in your local bookstore or download it for yourself. See you next time and thank you so much for your support.